What's going on guys? JSGC here and we are here for another daily Manchester City transfer update. Before I do crack on with this video, make sure like always if you are enjoying the content, do subscribe to my channel. It is free to subscribe. I'm going to keep you guys up to date every single day here on YouTube with all the latest Manchester City transfer news. So if you haven't already, do subscribe. It is free. Also, don't forget social media links. They're in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. 300 likes is the aim. Do let me know your thoughts as well in the comments below. And finally, I want to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, which is brought to you by SofaScore. They're going to keep you up to date with all the latest scores from around the grounds ahead of the new football season. They're also going to keep you guys up to date with the latest match information, the latest statistics and analysis for every single game. They're also going to keep you up to date every single day with all the latest scores from all the other sports that you guys love to follow. It's all in one place all in one app free to download it's uh, very highly rated so do go and check it out anyone that does download sofa score using my link in the description or the qr code on screen does help to support the future content created here on my channel so we're going to crack on with this video we're going to start off with the ins as we've got no contract news we do have one story in the outs but i'll get to that in just a moment. So we've got an update on Divin Mubama. Now Sam Lee has said that he is going to train mostly with the under 21s when he signs for Manchester City. He's a striker. He's going to sign for City after leaving West Ham and that will be sorted very soon. Sam Lee at the Athletic also says that he could have a few opportunities to train around the Manchester City first team as well. Man City here adding a little bit of depth to their under 21 department in the striker uh, part of the department but also providing a little bit of competition when it comes for Manchester City having a potential striker in the squad if Man City choose to address in the market the absence of Julian Alvarez I firmly believe that they'll be going for a versatile attacker rather than a backup striker to Erling Haaland because I do not believe that anyone that is quality up top will agree to come and sit on Man City's bench because that is what will happen if you're playing second fiddle to Erling Haaland the only way you can make that back is through signing an attacker that's versatile that can play through the centre, can play in centre midfield would be a big bonus, can play in attacking midfield, can play with Haaland can play without Haaland can play on the right and can play on the left it's going to take a long time for City to really think about which player they want to go with so if you're not going to sign an out and out striker having out and out strikers in the academy is a good thing and someone like Liam Delap leaving Manchester City because uh, if we hadn't have sold him it would have been perfect to have called up to the City first team not having him gives somebody else the opportunity and I think City are just looking for a little bit more depth in attack if they want to use uh, Obama or another one of the academy players to come in and provide competition and train alongside the first team and get some experience then that could well be the plan that City look for into the upcoming season. I think Man City are just looking at all bases here and looking to just make sure that they're all filled ahead of the season and making sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed here. And Man City just uh, being very sensible but also pretty smart in the transfer market with this signing when you think about it. Now moving on, we've got the latest on Claudio Echeverri. We know that he's going to be signing for Manchester City. He's already signed, he's already held up his shirt. He's already come over to Manchester, done his medical and signed his contract he then left Manchester City to go back to River Plate in Argentina where he's spending the whole of 2024 on loan and was speaking in yesterday's video about Graham Bailey reporting that Manchester City could well uh, choose to end that loan spell at River Plate for Echeverry early to bring Echeverry back to Manchester City to provide competitive competition amongst Manchester City's midfield in particular with him being pretty versatile playing along that attacking line and can play in central midfield, in attacking midfield, behind the striker, and I imagine he'll be able to do the job if Erling Haaland was injured as well. And that long term might be what Man City are thinking about. That might be the reason why Man City are um and ahhing about maybe making a move for somebody like uh, Eberet Chayeze, because you've already got the option that in one or two seasons' time, Echeverry could be ready to take over that spot 
for Manchester City. Problem we've got with Echeverry is he's not got any experience in Europe. So if he comes to Manchester City, we don't know how good he's going to be, what level he's looking at. He'll definitely need time. I always say you need two seasons. If you're coming over as a young player from South America and you're being chucked into the deep end, you're probably going to need another season on top of that. I mean, have a good look at Maximo Perone. It's difficult to be able to come in, provide that competition and provide the Manchester City with that option, option A, option B, option C. So it's all about having them options there. I'll be surprised if Echeverry is recalled by Manchester City. If he is, that will definitely tell me I don't think that City are going to do any business, certainly in this window when it comes to signing a potential attacker. Well, I'll keep my eyes and ears on the developments, but Pep Guardiola has already confirmed that he doesn't know about bringing him back from uh, River Plate to sign uh, and be with the Manchester City first team squad for the upcoming season. He says that him and Chicky haven't really discuss that so with that being said I'm going to presume that the status quo rolled here uh, and right now Echeverry will be staying at River Plate now moving on to the final transfer confirmed transfer in the out Calvin Phillips is officially signed for Ipswich Town on a season-long loan from Manchester City. No purchase option. Still waiting for more details about how much of a loan fee is being paid and what percentage of Calvin Phillips' wage is being covered by Ipswich Town. But other than that, everything else done and dusted. Remember, Calvin Phillips, don't think it's going to be registered in time for him to make his debut uh, for Ipswich this weekend. He will, however, I imagine, be presented to the fans. He won't be available for their next game next weekend away against Manchester. Manchester City as he'll be ineligible as he is a player on loan from Manchester City so he'll have to wait until their game after uh, Ipswich uh, when they take on Manchester City for him to make his Ipswich town debut so to wish Calvin the very best of luck and I also want to discuss now because this frees up a little bit more space in the Manchester City squad albeit at the moment with the comments made by Pep Guardiola about João Cancelo if he stays at Man City past uh, the transfer deadline day then it's more than likely that uh, João Cancelo will be registered as a Manchester City player and therefore the spot that Calvin Phillips has freed up is there for uh, occupied again so if João Cancelo ends up leaving Manchester City which is where I imagine the next seven days or so will be the focus for Manchester City to ensure that everything's all sorted in terms of players leaving on loan that are around the first team squad and everything's all sorted when it comes to the first team squad it then just becomes about potentially signing players for the final seven to ten days of the transfer window then it's all about sorting out that future with João Cancelo we saw that out and he ends up leaving Manchester City there is space in that squad with Julian Alvarez leaving and Calvin Phillips leaving Leaving and João Cancelo leaving, there's at least two spots available in the Manchester City squad and there is no reason with the net spend that Manchester City have got for not addressing the biggest problem in our squad and looking at finding a number six, number eight for Manchester City. The Ilkay Gundogan replacement, a player that can uh, both complement Rodri and also provide competitive competition in the squad that should he need a rest, you've got that option, that contingency there. Nico O'Reilly, fantastic option to have, high quality young player, going to need time, going to need a couple of seasons. I don't want to chuck him in at the deep end and end up finding uh, himself drowning, so to speak, and he's out of his depth and Manchester City look... Uh, exposed so to speak my concern here is Rodri picks up a serious injury for Manchester City then we look very short and you need that option Kovacic is a good option you dip past Kovacic and then you're looking at players having to be very versatile you can cope of course Manchester City have enough quality to cope but we don't want to be relying on stretching players out of position when you've got the perfect opportunity to address the situation right now. And we were crying out last season for this position. We've not addressed it so far this summer. The money is there. The space is there. Man City need to sort that out before transfer deadline day. You run the risk a serious Rodri injury at some point this season and that could have detrimental effects on Manchester City's season come the uh, well, come May, come June time for City at the end of the season. Same with Erling Haaland as well. You let a high quality player like Alvarez go and you're not really replacing him and you're relying on somebody else, a young player to come through and uh, these players start to pick up injuries. You start to feel the wear and tear of the season once you're playing every three to four days and you need him to rotate. You 
need them options. You've got to have them options. So for me, City is still a couple of players short. No reason for City not to be working hard in this window to bring in one or two players before transfer deadline day. That has to be the priority. Yeah, we need to sort out what's happening with Cancelo, but it takes time to be able to bring players in. And I feel that Man City are just waiting for their moment. For a club to be desperate to let a player go, for City to pick up a good deal to say, hmm, not sure if that's the player that we're looking at, but it's a really good deal. We're going to strike and we're going to deal with that player to provide depth for Manchester City because we need them options. Uh, to me... It's up to me. I'd go all out for Bruno G. If Bruno G is the player that you want, you spend big, you make that transfer happen. If not, you need the contingencies in place. Option B, option C, when it comes to providing that depth for Manchester City. Because that could be the difference between Man City winning the Premier League title or Manchester City just missing out. And at the moment... I don't know what's going to happen. You want your squad to be as strong as possible. We've let high-quality players leave. The likes of Julian Alvarez. We're bringing in high-quality young players, inexperienced players. You need to be strengthening your team because everybody else around us, they're strengthening, they're playing catch-up. Manchester City, we know what it takes to be at the top. I trust Pep Guardiola and Chicky. They've been here before. They know what they're doing. Pep Guardiola be very coy on whether City wants to do a bit of business. If City weren't doing any business, Pep Guardiola would be saying what he said in previous windows, which is, that's us done and dusted. He's not saying Man City are done and dusted because Pep Guardiola is interested in a player. He wants a player. Man City wants to identify a player. They need to be quick. Time running out. Two weeks left of this summer transfer window. Who do Manchester City replace Calvin Phillips in that squad with? Which central defensive midfielder? If it's not going to be Bruno G, who do you go after? Let me know in the comments below. So there we go. That has been today's video. Uh, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. 300 likes is the aim. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So subscribe as well if you're new around here. Press that red button, press the bell and put your push notifications on. Social media links, they're in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Email also in the description too. If you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos, or any general business inquiries and don't forget to go and check out today's video sponsor which is brought to you by SofaScore. see you all again religiously tomorrow for the next daily Manchester City transfer update. So I've been JSGC. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope everyone is safe and well. Peace. Ciao for now.